Is it finally the year of the Linux desktop? A lot of people love to say that line uh, when personally I think the, the year of the Linux desktop is up to you. Is it the Linux desktop uh, for you yet? Uh, and that's when you, I would say that's a good saying to say. Is it, is it the year of the Linux desktop for you? Not in terms of the market share because really the market share is going to take a very long time. Uh, maybe soon there might be a pretty big jump but i would say that when it comes to can the linux desktop be uh, neck and neck with windows uh, that might be a while away but recently uh, there was some uh, analytics that was posted about linux desktop oh it was about the just general market share and linux was at six point zero percent in the usa which it was recorded by the u.s federal government which does different analytics for all types of different categories in the country which if you do scroll down here uh, this was seven days ago so it was at 6.6 .6, but if we do 30 we can see it is at six percent and then we do also have Chrome OS, which is 0.8%, and Android, which is 16.6%, which these are based on Linux. Like Chrome OS, I'm pretty sure, is based off a Linux distro. Either it be, I think it's Debian now that it's based off. And then Android uses the Linux kernel. Uh, I wouldn't really call it running Linux. Yes, it's running the kernel, which is one of the most important parts of running Linux. You need that or Linux just won't run because, well, you need the kernel. But um, I would say that uh, Chrome OS and Linux uh, together, you're at 6.8%. And then if you did add Android, uh, yeah, look, it's a really big percentage. But if we just look at the desktop part of Linux, it is at uh, 6%. And then if we do look at the stat count, uh, United States is at 5.24, so close to the analytics from the uh, USA government. And then if we look at worldwide of stat count, it is at 3.9%, which I did make a video exactly a year ago about Linux desktop is growing. And in that video, uh, when we looked at the stat counter, it was at 4.45%. So it definitely has gone down. But the big thing to notice, which it's not really that big, is that the Windows market share for July was 72.8%. 0.8%, uh, while if we looked at July for Windows now, it is at 71.83%, so it has dropped a little bit. And if we added on the unknown part of this stat counter, uh, the unknown is when a web browser doesn't know what the operating system is because the operating system doesn't like say, hey, I'm Linux or hey, I'm Mac OS. And usually those uh, computers or servers are usually AI models, which what do they run? Linux. So, I mean, some would probably want run Windows as well, but the majority of them will be running Linux. So, uh, the market share for Linux is actually over 10%, roughly, which is pretty damn insane. Now, of course, I wouldn't personally count that because uh, that is uh, server workloads that are happening. It's not desktop Linux. So, when you look at if an application wants to support Linux, I don't think they'll be looking at the unknown part. They'll be looking at just Linux itself, which will be at like around 4% or so, or 6% if you're looking at the US one. Now, why is it growing? Well, for one, Linux desktop is getting better. It's maturing when it comes to a lot of the components that are running on the Linux desktop. Things like uh, the display manager has been moved over to a better one, even though it's still has some issues left it's rather better when it comes to running on newer hardware and features like hdr and vr um, it has been improving a lot but the biggest point is probably that windows 10 is ending in october 2025 which is like what two months away or something or three which is there's going to be a lot of people who have laptops and computers that are from 2016 uh, all the way down to, you know, past 2000 era that are running roughly maybe Windows 10 and they will have to go out and buy a new computer without knowing that they can actually keep the computer running for years to come with, well, Linux. And that is probably one of the biggest reasons as to why Linux has grown just a little bit more faster in some countries, especially like the USA 
or like in other places like Europe. Or India, as we can see, India is at 8.46%. Uh, used to be at a pretty high point, which was 17%, but it did drop off a little bit. But uh, the good thing about India and Linux is Linux is free. So when it comes to uh, giving Linux to India uh, users, it's really easy for them to of course, download it. It's you can easily get a rather light version of a Linux distro and install it on their computers to keep it running for a very long time. And just through looking at some of the countries, places like Finland have really high percentages. I was talking about Europe, uh, you know, 19.14% Linux market share, which is truly insane. And I would say this is all thanks to the European government uh, trying to uh, move different governments throughout Europe over to Linux. Especially places in like Germany, for example, they have the Sovereign Tech Agency, and this has been giving out a ton of funding for different projects to improve the features on either it be low level type uh, software, or it be things like the desktop side of Linux or package management. Like you see here, GNOME, million euros given to GNOME to improve their accessibility tooling and security for their Linux desktop ecosystem. Which that's why you've seen a lot of updates with GNOME when it comes to the accessibility side. Um, that's why on GNOME there's now that page in the settings where you can look at what apps you've been using for how long, uh, like the screen usage thing, like a, um, a health uh, application for that type of stuff. Uh, that is why you've been seeing that because of the sovereign tech giving a lot of money to them. And as you can see here, all the other projects that they have been giving money to, like the Arch Linux distro for the package management, they gave uh, 500k euros, or when it comes to PyPyre, they gave $150,000 to PyPyre to improve uh, the accessibility support for hearing aid technology and addressing technical debt within the framework. And then, like I said, with Europe, uh, many governments have been moving over or at least trying to move over to open source software or Linux itself. Like uh, one of the governments in Europe has been trying to do it when, when it comes to moving over computers. Uh, they've been trying to uh, move 30,000 employees over to Linux. And uh, there was an article of them doing it. Uh, a long time ago and it absolutely failed uh, probably because Linux wasn't really that ready when it came to the software side of things and the desktop side of things wasn't probably that great but when it comes to Microsoft and how much it costs in a government agency it would cost so much to pay for the Microsoft uh, you know, 365 software and then Windows Enterprise itself, and then also to keep it running on a different version of Windows, like if they want to keep Windows 10 uh, updates coming, uh, well, after Windows 10 ends, they have to pay even more money to keep getting those updates, which is ridiculous, I would say. And then we also do have the EU OS that is not managed by the European government, but it's trying to uh, introduce a Linux distro for the public sector so that, uh, you know, European governments can get a Linux distro installed on the, onto the computers and they can get help from people that do know uh, what they're doing with Linux itself. And of course, the biggest factors of why Linux desktop and Linux gaming have been growing quite a bit is because of all of the content creators that have been sharing their experience with using Linux. People like PewDiePie which I did not expect PewDiePie to be, uh, you know, make a video about his Linux experience. And as you can see, it has 6.5 million views, which is truly uh, insane once again. <laughs> And then we also have other tech YouTubers like Jay's Two Cents. He made a video about trying Bazite on the computer uh, on a custom PC, and he was surprised of how good it was. And another popular YouTuber, tech YouTuber, is Gamers Nexus. They have also been talking about using uh, Linux for things like gaming benchmarks. 
thinking about doing it and showing it in things like uh, news videos about how you know Linux gains more market share, stuff like that, as you know, Windows 10 is well dropping support. And the last couple of things uh, is that when it comes to Valve, uh, they have been improving uh, Linux gaming so much, I would say, and in introducing the Steam Deck and improving SteamOS to the point where they have been bringing SteamOS to different hardware like the Legion Go S, which right now is actually cheaper on sale, cheaper versus the Windows variant that you can get. Like the gaming experience on Linux today, I would say is pretty damn good. Uh, you know, of course there's still some issues left, uh, some driver issues left like on Nvidia GPUs with VKD3D slash DirectX 12 performance isn't that great. Uh, but when it comes to Proton and all, and all that, uh, it has been improving uh, so much that 99.9% .9 of my games just work out of the box, I would say. And especially if you do own a Steam Deck, you you get such an awesome experience because Valve is in control of both the hardware and the software. So you get a really good experience when it comes to just playing your games on a handheld device. In one of the last companies that I'll talk about that has been mentioning Linux a little bit more is framework they have been posting a little bit on social media uh kind of like joking and all that about the you know year of the linux desktop and all that uh but when it comes to framework they do have a whole page about using linux in which linux distros are officially supported and which ones are compatible slash community supported but as I have been saying lately uh, to Framework, both in their support and through comments on social media, they need to start installing, pre-installing uh, Linux on their computers, allowing the user to choose Linux uh, and then Framework will install it, update it, make sure that it's all up to date before they send it out so that the user can get uh, straight into using Linux. Because one of the main points with uh, you know, first things of doing when it comes to installing Linux is you have to install it manually. You have to flash it on a USB stick. You have to you know, get into your BIOS and pick the um, device to boot into, which is the USB stick, and then hopefully format the right drive, which you might muck up on those things. And then maybe it won't install properly. Um, stuff like that uh, makes the Linux barrier a bit difficult and scary for new users. So if Framework could just provide Linux pre-installed on their computers, uh, it would make the experience a lot more enjoyable for those people and it gets them in the door to try it and then if they do enjoy it then they can actually try and install Linux manually on other computers because they know a lot more about it by just using it. Now, of course, if you are someone that is watching this video right now and you do not uh, know anything about Linux, but uh, because Windows 10 is ending October and you've heard about Linux, uh, I would highly recommend checking out endof10.org. They are uh, you know, it's a bunch of different Linux distros and uh, organizations that have come together to make this website to try and get people uh, to install Linux as easily as possible and get help for installing Linux. As it says here, support for Windows 10 ends on October 14th, 2025. Microsoft wants you to buy a new computer, but what if you could make your current one fast and secure again? If you bought your computer after 2010, there's most likely no reason to throw it out. By just installing an up-to-date Linux operating system, you can keep using it for years to come. Installing an operating system may sound difficult, but you don't have to do it alone. With any luck, there are people in your area ready to help. And this is true. I do have a 2015 Acer Travel Mate uh, laptop that is running uh, Pop OS on it with the uh, Cosmic Rust desktop. And before it was running uh, Windows 10 and it absolutely sucked. It could rarely run a couple of processes running at the same time and it would start to struggle. Uh, and since installing Linux on it after, because I've been using it since high school, uh, after, you know, high school ended and I bought the laptop from school, uh, installing Linux on it has been really nice to use on it. Even though it's still not that powerful, it gets the job done when it comes to watching media or wanting to download different files and share it with my server PC, which is from 2013 and it's running a Debian uh, 
distro, it's running Debian on it and it's running as a server with a bunch of Docker containers like Jellyfin for watching media across different devices like movies and TV shows and even music and then things like backups to photos. Um, you know, this hardware is still usable today for many different things. And I do not need to buy a whole new computer or go out and buy a TPM chip just to install Windows 11. And if we do copy this link, because I'm not going to be able to open up the maps area on this browser because it's a bit too secure, you can have a look at all of the places that are actually uh, you know, signed up for this website to try and get as many people uh, to install Linux or just help people install Linux on their computers. And as you can see, there is a bunch uh, in the you know, in Europe and there's a decent amount in the United States. Uh, in Australia, there's a little bit, uh, but hopefully more people, uh, do, you know, more stores and repair centers uh, do sign up in Australia because Australia is one of those places where Linux isn't really that popular uh, or isn't really known when it comes to the desktop uh, place. So I definitely do wonder uh, what Linux uh, market share will be at when it comes to after October, because that's when all the stats uh, websites do update for October. I do wonder what Linux will be at. And if you guys uh, did enjoy watching this video, definitely give it a like, subscribe to the channel, and I want to know your thoughts about the whole Linux uh, desktop landscape. Uh, you know, what you think will happen down the line. If you've had anyone, uh, you know, teach anyone how to install Linux, you know, like my, I got my friend uh, to install Linux. I installed Nabara Linux for him, and he has been absolutely enjoying it when it comes to playing games on it. And thank you to my supporters. I'll show a text across the screen. Thank you for giving me money every single damn month. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.